so just starting with a quick review of the last weeks, the first uh, three weeks ago it was stewardship. And remember that stewardship is not just raising money. Take the word steward. We are stewards of God's gifts, and everything is a gift. Even our breath is God's gift. And what we do with those gifts talk, tells us what kind of a steward we are. We, ha we are. Last week was scripture. Reading the Bible. If, uh, the, the results of the survey are in the bulletin in case you're interested. And uh, last weekend, 70% of the people responding said they never read the Bible. But the positive is 30% are reading the Bible. And the staff was discussing that. And, and we, reading the Bible is intimidating. But we as the staff don't know how to help you. So if you got any ideas about how, what, how we can help you open the Bible, let us know. Give us some direction on how to do that. So today we're going to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about prayer. Last Sunday between Masses and then Monday night, I was part of a panel of three people that talked about prayer. Uh, Pat Kwiatowski was the second person. These are the chair of our pastoral council. And Alex Stralo, Alex, raise your hand over there. He was... Uh, the third person uh, talking about prayer. I'm not going to ask you to talk today, Alex. Don't worry. So if you are there, some of this is a repetition. So the first thing we've, we've discovered is why pray? Why do you pray? Now, most of us, we pray when we're in trouble. Do you ever have that in your life where something happened and that's when we really pray? But if everything is going smoothly, that's when we usually slack off from prayer, and we don't. So why do we pray? First of all, I believe there is a God, and I suspect most of us here also believe God. We have different notions of God, I grant that, but some type of a supreme being. And... I suspect most of us believe that when this life is over, we hope to go and spend eternity with that God, that supreme being, however we imagine that God to be. So I pray, even when I am not in trouble, to get to know that God a little better. Because I think if I'm going to spend eternity with God, I don't want to spend eternity with a stranger. So that's one of the reasons I pray. The way I like, to, I like to think in images. So from our birth until the end of eternity, I view that as a, uh, a uh, uh, dating, engagement, and a wedding idea. My idea is that when we physically die, that's when we enter the marriage with God. So from birth until physical death, I view this as the dating period. The engagement, where we, like when you, when you are dating somebody, you want to get to know them a little bit better. So I view this life as I'm dating God, get, trying to get to, God, get to know God a little better so that the marriage will be a little happier after death. That's why we pray, I think. So if you decide to pray, how do you do that? Well, the first thing, it seems, you have to find a time when you want, when you're going to pray. And every day, we're talking about every day. Now, from our, my, our conversations with people, most people, their time for prayer is right after they get up in the morning. That seems to be, for most people, the best time. Maybe get up five or ten minutes earlier when the house is still quiet and to spend some time with God in prayer. And you can have coffee. They always say you can't drink coffee while you're praying, but you certainly can pray while you're drinking coffee. Find a time when you can, you have a little bit of time by yourself. And then try to find a place where you pray. 
a prayer corner or something, or uh, where you have some kind of a symbol, you know, whether it is a crucifix or some people like to light a candle or whatever, that this, and it brings you into that context of prayer. Here at Seton, we have the Eucharistic Reservation Chapel, which is a wonderful place to pray. However, it's hard to get to because we have to keep the doors locked during the week because of vandalism. But if you ever want to come and pray, just come back through the office downstairs and come up. Loud. You'd be surprised how many people do come during the day and spend some time in prayer. And by the way, Holy Apostles has a prayer chapel. They just finished building it. It's on the west side of the building, right? You enter by the bell tower. And it's open from 6.30 in the morning until 9.30 at night, in case some of you live that direction. It's a wonderful place uh, to stop for prayer. You decide when and where and how. So when you come to pray, what do you do? Usually we feel the humanness in us that we have to be constantly talking. Just try to quiet yourself. It's always good to start prayer by taking a couple long, deep breaths, maybe calling down the Holy Spirit to open up our minds to God's ways. And you could talk a little bit during prayer, tell God your problems and how your day is going and so on when, whenever you pray. But then after a while, just be silent. Today's gospel, that's where it comes from. This is my beloved son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Just be quiet and listen. Now God's not going to speak to you like I'm speaking to you. At least God never spoke to me this way. But God works through the inclinations of our mind and our heart and our consciences. And I've talked about this before. All of us have had these inspirations where we said to ourselves, boy, I ought to do this something good. Or maybe I ought to stop doing something that is sinful or harmful. That's the voice of God. Listen to that. And I, again, always encourage bringing in a little bit of the Scriptures because that's God speaking to us. Every week in the... Do you know that morning Mass, there are three readings at every morning Mass... And if you read those three readings every day for about two years, you will have covered all the important parts of the Bible. And those readings are listed in the bulletin every week. So if you want to listen to God, read those three readings. It only takes about three minutes. And let that be God speaking to you. And if you're interested in coming to morning Mass, we read those readings aloud, and I usually have a short commentary on them. But then after reading the readings, just be quiet and ask, what are you telling me, God? Sometimes you'll come up with nothing. Sometimes there might be an inspiration. But the whole idea is to open ourselves up to God's ways. Because if we're honest, our ways are not God's ways. We, we're not stupid people. We know how to... Uh, we want our problems to be solved. But that always isn't the real answer because we can't see the long-term effects. Example of that that I read this week was a, a local doctor in a small town 50 years ago was treating a boy that had some kind of a virus which caused internal hemorrhaging and the boy was dying and the doctor did not know how to treat him. So he called a specialist who was a friend of his, lived about 50 miles away, and said, would you please come because he said, I think you could help this boy live because it's your specialty. So the doctor said, the specialist said, I'm on the way. So he drove into that town, and when he got to the edge of the town, he stopped for a stop sign, and suddenly a big man opened the car door and pulled him out and said, I need your car. And the man was big and he had no, could not resist. All he remembered was, because it happened so fast, that the man had on a gray baseball cap and a black leather jacket. That's all he remembered. Well, this was the day before cell phones. So he, he went to a number of homes to call somebody. 
Nobody was home. Finally, he found one to get a taxi. He got to the hospital, and when he got to the hospital, the other doctor met him and said, you know, it was a couple hours had passed. The doctor said, oh, I wish you'd have been here sooner. The boy just died 20 minutes ago. But the doctor said, would you come and console his parents? So they went into the waiting room where the parents were, of course, crying hysterically. And when the man, he had his head in his, in his lap, and when he, when he stood, up, or, uh, stood up straight, the man had on a gray baseball cap and a black leather jacket. If only he would have let the man, the specialist, come to the hospital and not do it his way. Have you had instances of that? That's why we pray, to know God's ways. So, those of you who have a smartphone, if you would uh, look up at the screen and uh, turn it on, go into our Seton website, mystelizabeth.com, M-Y-S-T-E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H.com, scroll down to survey. And there you will see, outside of Mass, I pray, rarely, several times a week, every day. This is anonymous, so be honest. And if I remember, we'll show you the results after communion, and they'll be in the bulletin next week, too. We thank you for watching the homily during the Lenten season, joining in our prayerful service as we prepare for the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. You're always welcome to join us in person, or if you wish, you can always visit us on mystelizabeth.com or watch us on Facebook. A blessed Lent to you. Looking forward to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus.